stick for self-defense using Kali martial arts sticks for self-defense. This self-defense stick is made out of hickory. You can get these made out of a lot of different materials. There's a link below if you want to see what the dimensions are, but basically it's going to be about the length of your arm, which gives you significant reach advantage over something like this. If he has something like this, this is the threat. This is the thug. This is the criminal. And you have to defend yourself and you have nothing else, but you can pick something up like this to defend yourself. You can now keep him back striking, thrusting, shoving a lot of different things using a Kali martial arts stick. You might not have a Kali martial arts stick, but training with them will give you the skill set that you need to defend yourself in the case that you have to use it. Start with one in each hand. If you have two, if you only have one, just use one. You're going to do this motion here. This is part of your warm up. This is to get blood, plasma, oxygen, everything to float throughout your veins into the joints, into the wrists, the forearms, the arms. Get yourself ready for this training. Hello, Richard. It's good to see you. You want to stay safe from injury. After you do this motion for about 30 seconds, put your hands toward the end. You want to make sure that you always have a little bit of room at the end of the stick. You're going to choke up like you would a baseball bat so that you can strike with this side when you have to defend yourself. This can also be used to trap and to even strip a weapon out of somebody's hand once you learn how to use it. Start with one in each hand if you have two. Again, if you only have one, just use one. But you're going to go forward in this motion. You're going to warm up the wrists. Hello, David. It's good to see you. You're going to stretch everything out. Stay safe from injury. After 30 seconds, going forward, pull it into the reverse. If you like practicing self-defense or training self-defense, using weapons or using your hands, whatever it is, give me a thumbs up if self-defense training is something that's important to you or you just like to learn how to fight with sticks. Go forward and go back. Just do that a few times and then I want you to throw them down and up. Keep them in your hands. Your hand is closed. You're now getting the blood to flow into the shoulders. Get that stretch going in your upper chest. Again, stay safe from injury. Just up and down and then you're going to split it. Once you split it, you're going to increase the range of motion, which means a deeper, fuller stretch for your shoulders, for your upper back, for your chest. It's also going to be good for your neck. If you've been using your phone all day, looking down, working on a computer, doing this motion is going to help your posture improve your alignment. While you're learning how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using Kali martial arts sticks. All right, now that you're properly warmed up, we're going to put one stick down. We'll come back to it in a minute. I want to show you some basic moves for self-defense using the Kali martial arts stick. Again, I showed you at the beginning, you have reach advantage. If he has a weapon like this, a bladed weapon, you're going to be able to keep him back using a thrusting motion first. So the stick is always going to be between you and the threat, and you're simply going to thrust. Make sure you have a good grip here. Just a straight arm, almost like a punch. Your elbow goes straight as you thrust. Now, you would not have a lot of strength in that normally, except you have to remember, it's this hard material against soft tissue of his body when you go through his center line. So you're thrusting, if you have something to strike, like a stack of tires, or a bag, or a padded pole, or a tree, you just practice this thrusting motion. So it's like a fencing foil. This first motion, as soon as this comes out, you know there's a threat, you see him pull this, However he's carrying it, you're going to bring it straight in to the center line. You want to stop his forward attack. Your second motion that I want you to practice for self-defense is pull it to your shoulder and strike. And when you strike, I want you to follow through. Follow through on all these self-defense strikes as you're learning how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense using your Kali martial arts self-defense stick coming through and then from the other shoulder coming through. Just follow through, put those three strikes together. The other hand is always up. You're going to thrust, strike, bring it up, and strike. Your foot is forward, and the hand that's carrying the stick, that same side of the body, that foot's going to be in the lead. The other hand is up. You've turned your body to make yourself a smaller target. If he's here, step away from him, especially if he has that bladed weapon. Thrust in here, pull to your shoulder, slice, and slice. You can hear the power of the strike, and especially Hello Awkward the Cat, using this Kali self-defense stick 
made in, this is specifically for self-defense. Traditional collie sticks, the screamless sticks or knee sticks are often made of a grass, um, not bamboo, but uh, rattan. They're made out of rattan. This is made out of hickory. This is specifically designed for self-defense. So you thrust here, strike one, strike two. And as I said at the very beginning, you're learning how to fight with Kali martial arts sticks for self-defense because you might not be carrying these with you, but if you see someone with a weapon or you feel threatened, you're not safe, and you can find a stick, there are often sticks in your environment. They just don't look like a sticks. It's called a non-permissive environment, right? You're not allowed to bring the Kali stick with you. Awkward Cat said she just got her Kali sticks the other day. She's happy with them, that's awesome. But learn how to fight with these sticks for self-defense, and then you can pick up another stick when you need it. So now I want you to practice thrust with one, strike through, bring it up, strike through, switch your feet. Thrust with the other one, bring it to your shoulder, and bring it through. Now it's really important for me to have you fight from behind your stick. And what that means is none of your strikes are gonna come from out here. If they're out here and he's coming in here, your arm is gonna wrap around his body, he's gonna close that distance. If he's got that bladed weapon, you're done. Your arm will literally wrap around him. You'll never hit him. If you start on your shoulder and you bring it from your shoulder and out and follow through, you're going to strike and keep him off of you. So thrusting one, strike two, strike three. Now, the next strike I want to show you after this basic thrust and the two downward angles is a horizontal strike coming right through the middle and then one coming back. And when you come through the middle, turn your palm up turn your hand over so the palm is facing the floor when you bring it back. And the reason for that is that as it's coming here, if your palm is up and you hit his body, that pressure is gonna come into your hand and it's gonna be stopped by the web of your hand. You're coming through. Awkward the cat said was looking for um, improvised sticks and found a lot in the environment that you're in. Coming through, coming back here. Make that a habit. Everywhere you go, look for something you can pick up. If you're not in a permissive environment, that means an environment where you're not able to carry something like this or something like this even. What is there that you could use that's just in your environment? So bring it through here, bring it through here. How would you use the short end of the stick? Good question, let's talk about that. So you have this thrusting motion, angle one, angle two, bring it through, bring it back. Now bring it to your opposite shoulder and you're gonna push straight forward. There's the camera right there. Push straight forward, right? This is coming here. Imagine that this part is going into his nose, into his throat for self-defense, into his solar plexus, into his teeth. From here, you can then just drop this down. One, two, right on the top of his head. So you're pushing in one, striking two. The other way you can bring it in is around here, turning your whole body, swinging, creating massive amounts of force, striking with this part, coming down here, he's behind you, turning and striking, bringing the short end into his body. There are a lot of different ways you can use it. You can even throw a punch, and as you're punching, use that part to go through his face for self-defense. Don't even hit him with your knuckles, come through and hit this side. So you're using this side also to come straight down. Think about down over the top, into his nose, ripping the nose off of his face for self-defense, ripping the teeth out of his mouth for self-defense, or even digging that, just burying it right there in the throat for self-defense. He pulled out that knife, he means to take your life, right? You had uh, nothing, no other choice. You picked this up for self-defense, and then you're sticking it in here, and then always as you're coming out, Throw that extra strike. And I want to give you something to practice before I have you practice a drill that's going to make you more comfortable with the sticks. The Sinawali, the weaving pattern we'll save for the end. But I want you to practice a striking drill. I'm going to show you on the bag. No free advertisement there. I'm going to show you on the bag. And then I want to show you how you can practice the Sinawali so you get better at it. From here, you're going to thrust with one hand and then pull it back and put the other hand on it and step in and thrust harder. So from here, let's say he surprises you, he comes, that weapon comes out, you see it, you wanna immediately, immediate direct and explosive. Immediately stick that into his face to stop his forward momentum. And then get the other hand on and then get more power behind that second thrust. 
So it's a double thrust. One, two, and then three. Both hands coming forward. After there, uh, who would, oh, since I am it, good to see you. Now I'm gonna box his ears using the two sides of my stick. And this one's just for since I am it, I was gonna have you bring it on top of his head, but first I'm gonna have you turn and flick that wrist over and hit him on the side of the head, rolling your hands to create maximum power. And then the other side, one, two, one, two. Practice this motion, bringing it back to your hand, turning, turning, turn your shoulders, turn your hips. You'll always have more striking power, more stopping the fight power when you turn your shoulders and turn your hips with the strike. So from here, you're gonna thrust, put the other hand on it, step and thrust. Continue to press the attack, moving forward, striking here, and then to the face, to the face, right? To the side. Finish, one, two, a couple strikes, you can do three or four strikes, and then finally here, or up into his body, here. Your goal is to knock him back, to strike him, to push him off. David says we can hear the power. There is a lot of power, and a lot of it, the weight of this hickory self-defense stick um, this, this is made by Cane Masters, the guys that make the self-defense cane. So you know it's made exceptionally well. It's made to last forever, but it's also very dense, hard wood that's designed for self-defense. It's the first link below if you want to see what the dimensions are. But you have this reach advantage over this bladed weapon. I don't want you to get into a sword fight with his knife. That's not what stick fighting is. When you think about what's controlling the stick, right? It's not even his hand. It's the, the, the operating system. His brain is controlling the knife. That's what you have to take out. You have to knock him out. You have to take this out of the equation. Don't worry about this. If you can strike the arm, strike the arm. This wood striking the wrist will break his bone. That'll happen for sure. If you have to though, stick it in his face. Keep him over there. From here, step in and extend. That's a much harder strike. The two hands right through his face, wherever that knife is, is going with him. He's going back, right? As you press, that's why I said press the attack, and then into the face. While someone's coming to his face with this much force and this much violence, violence of action, close with and destroy all principles of self-defense, it's going to be hard for him to be hitting his target with his knife. Whatever his expectation was, it's gone. You've interrupted his pattern. If he's the kind of thug criminal who walks around, pulling knives on people and taking lives and taking valuables and taking health from people with his weapon, all of a sudden you've interrupted that pattern. It's not gonna go the way he expects it to. So you're gonna go in, thrust, thrust, shove, box the ears, and then this is that Irish stick fighting technique. You can use your shillelagh or you can use your Kali martial arts stick. Pop, whatever you can do to learn how to fight with a stick for self-defense, using Kali martial arts sticks for self-defense, you should learn it. There's no, nothing wrong to learn, because once you learn all the techniques, you're not gonna be relying or focusing on the techniques anyway. You're gonna ask yourself the question, what target can you remove or destroy for self-defense? His ability to see you or breathe temporarily permanent, his ability to be awake and to use his hands, because his brain is shut off, because you strike it there with vicious ferocity for self-defense. Whatever it is, his ability to stand up, his ability to hold that weapon because you've broken that bone with your Kali martial arts self-defense stick made in hickory. Again, that's that first link below if you want to see the length, the width, and all that in the material. It's just a simple, if you, just a general rule of thumb, it's going to be about as long as your arm. Then you can go longer sticks, you can go shorter sticks. The principles are mostly the same. There'll be a little bit different techniques. But when you ask yourself, what can you remove or destroy, that's going to tell you what the target. Then when you know what the target, that's going to tell you what kind of technique you're going to use. Now, I want you to finish with the Sinawali weaving pattern. Now, when you fight somebody for self-defense, this is what Sinawali looks like. This is one of many, many patterns that you can learn. You're not going to fight him with that. In other words, it's just like spinning oh, any other weapon. You're not going to fight someone with a spin. You're not going to fight him with a cane spin. You're not going to fight him with a bow staff spin. You're not going to fight him with your Joe, with your Hanbo, with your Tanbo. You're not going to fight him with the Sinawali, no matter what it is. You know all these fancy moves, but 
You want to learn them so that you can disguise repetition, build capacity, build your heart and lungs, condition your body. This is like jumping rope for a boxer. This is like speed bag for a boxer. So this basic pattern, start with your hands on your shoulders, bring one over and bring it from here, the other one over and bring them in. So from here, bring one over, bring the other one over and in. From here, one over. Notice I give myself room to bring that other one over. Now they're crossed. Once you've crossed your arms, you're gonna uncross your arm by repeating the first strike, the first hand, right, left. So if I go left, when you do left, do your right, and then do your right and left. I think I did the opposite. That's your, we'll call this your right, that's your left, that's your right, that's your left. It's my right and left too. But you're coming over, over, back, back. And then just switch it up, back, back. It's just a matter of crossing your arms and uncrossing your arms. Sinawali just means a weaving pattern. So you're weaving one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you can switch it up so that the hand that's on the top is different, that's my right hand on top, that's your left hand on top. There's your right, there's your left. But from here it's one, two, three, four. Then you can chamber it up over under here. Uh, W9U of UFO says, fascinating to say thank you for the instruction. Thanks for being here and thanks for training with me. I appreciate all of your support. One, that's what makes this global dojo so rewarding and fun for me is that feel like we're learning together. If you've learned anything, please put that in the comment section. Maybe not this one, but on another one. David, it's my pleasure. Thanks for being here. When you go on to your target or with a partner, this becomes really fun and rewarding. You can spend hours doing this. And you'll start with your feet kind of static. And then you'll learn how to step in with one foot and in with the other foot. So you're changing your foot position. And then you'll start to circle around your bag or your practice partner. All while doing the same basic weaving pattern. Starting here until you become so proficient that you change the second move. So instead of doing this, now you can turn and do a deflecting move. There's that second move. And then from there, that second move can, can go to the knee. And then from there, add a whole nother move altogether. So instead of three strikes, you're going to four per side. And so you either have a three striking pattern, you can have a two striking pattern, you can have four strikes in a pattern, you can go up from there. You can start off just like this, again, with your target or with your partner, just turning your shoulder and learning how to fight behind your sticks. And the same thing, you can step right, left, right, left, right, left, and then bring them down to the knees, left, right, left, and just do it, do the same thing, do the basics so much that you start bleeding out of your pores and out of your eyes and out of your nose. And that's a... Uh, that's not literal, right? That just means that you do it so much that you stop thinking about it. You get out of your own way. Your ego dissipates. And you start thinking about nothing. You get that Zen mind. You get that empty mind, that Mushim. And you can just go through and you can do that over and over and over so that you don't think about it. Marsh Oak Dojo, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for being here. But just break it down. Master the basics. Tim will tell you, it, when, when you master the basics, right? Since I'm going we'll, to we'll tell you, everybody here who's done martial arts for any length of time will tell you that the masters, the ones who are the best that we've all learned from, have amazing foundation, have an amazing deep and wide. They've mastered the basics. Now, they can do some really cool things that most people can't too. Also, you can also do high-level techniques, but never without that foundation. And if you do, because you have some weird talent and you can do some really high level techniques, it all crumbles when this is weak. And so building that foundation also builds your mental toughness when it hurts, when you get the calluses, 
when you do sweat and, ble and bleed, right? Blood, sweat, and tears and cry and get frustrated and whack yourself in the head. You can hear how hard it is just from that. My head, not the stick. But then you get a partner and you start doing these together. And then you start learning timing and distance, spatial awareness, all the things that make you better at self-defense or martial arts or self-defense and martial arts, however you want to look at it. But get yourself a pair of these and don't wait to start. Cut a broom in half, cut a rake handle in half, find two sticks in the backyard or in the woods or wherever you can find them. It doesn't even have to be wood. You can get two pieces of pipe and practice, but start slowly at first. And I've made a lot of these videos on how to do the Sinawali. So if there's not enough instruction here, go back and watch one of those. I break it down a lot. I even do the slow-mo. I always thought that I could be a slow motion actor. <laughs> Whatever that is, I just made that up. All right, you guys have been awesome. I've got to go teach a class. I'm going to do slow-mo in there and see if they can pick up on the fact that I slowed it down and it wasn't like on purpose or it was on purpose. We'll see. Anyway, you guys have been great. Thanks for being here and I'll see you on the next